Have you ever wondered how the big real estate players pick winning properties? Today we're uncovering the key metric that commercial real estate investors use for evaluating deals, the cap rate. And it's more than just a formula, so make sure you stick around until the end of this video to know how to use the cap rate effectively. You're probably curious about the formula and think it's really complicated, but no need to worry. It's simpler than you think, but to truly use cap rate effectively, there's a crucial income piece we need to understand. So stay tuned, this one's a game changer. And just like understanding the best ingredients that make a great dish, knowing what can impact your cap rate can change your real estate game forever. Trust me, knowing this is a must for all investors as it can make or break a deal. Without further ado, let's jump in. So let's talk a little bit more about the cap rate formula. So again, you've got your net operating income divided by your property purchase price. So first of all, let's talk about the net operating income. How you get to that is you have your gross rental income plus your other income, that comes together for your total income for the property. And then you have a combination of expenses that you incur, your variable expenses uh, that are incurred at the property and your fixed rate expenses. These are all deducted from that gross or total income. And with that figure, you now end up with a net operating income. So now you're able to take that net operating income figure and divide it by the property value. So let's just say, for example, for the sake of easy math here on our uh, video today, your net operating income is a million dollars and you paid $10 million for the project. That is a 10 cap on the property. Now, again, it'd be lovely if we're able to obtain those, but that's not really today's cap rate. But that is for our purposes of discussion, a clear result of how that formula works. So let's talk about the importance of net operating income. Again, we talked a bit about it, but I want to just expand on it a little bit more. So, you, you know, with that net operating income, you have the total rents that you receive, your total other income, and then the expenses that are minus out to get to net operating income. So this is the critical component where every dollar counts, right? Because when you're increasing your rents, and again, there's projects where we've taken uh, renovated the unit, of course, made it better, but brought rents from eight fifty to twelve fifty. That's a four hundred dollar gain, almost a a fifty percent increase. And again, I know that's true because we've done it. I just earlier this morning left a property of that nature. So when you're making those gains, and a lot of times maybe it's not that high. Maybe it's one hundred and fifty or two hundred dollars based on those improvements. But that matters because you're increasing those dollars, and as you increase those dollars, they come down to your bottom line. Also, as we talked about in another video about decreasing or trying to minimize or reduce expenses, that also increases to your bottom line. And every dollar that you increase in your net operating income gives you a greater cap rate on the project that you're going into. Also, when you get ready to sell the property, that's also a huge factor as you've expanded your NOI. If you're enjoying this video, make sure give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Let's talk about some of the factors that can affect cap rates. So definitely uh, cap rates can vary by market and location. They can vary by type of property and also the current market condition. So let's just talk about that for a moment. So historically and traditionally, there are markets that have stronger demand and typically as there is stronger demand for those properties, there is a lower cap rate, meaning more people are willing to buy it. And as a result of that, there is traditionally a lower cap rate. And so that's a little bit what you'd expect as a lesser return. Now, us as a company, for example, I don't tend to want to take and accept that. Our team is tasked with finding the hidden gem within the market we want to be in so that we're on the look. An example of that is traditionally Florida had been an area where people want to pay more money, they'll take a lower cap rate to be by the beach. It's just traditionally speaking, that's the case. However, that being said, we've bought several properties throughout the greater Tampa area and even more in Florida as a result of our team and the diligence that we put into finding it. So again, it's possible to do, not easy to do, but that is true. The other thing that you have to look at is not only location, but the type of property. Historically, again, you know that the Class A property that was just built uh, in theory has less uh, maintenance and things that need to be done because it was just built. So traditionally, that's a lower cap rate going in because there's less potentially 
uh, renovations and problems that you'd have. And so there's an expectation by the investor buying it that it's going to be a smoother uh, execution or less capital be spent on those type of repairs because it's brand new. And so that traditionally is affected. And then also, you know, you have different property types, whether it's B and C, there's been historically some different correlation of the cap rates there because of the expected uh, return that you'd have to achieve or risk that you're taking per se. And then the last thing that we look at is market conditions, right? So if you're in a low interest rate market environment, that traditionally also has affected to be a lower cap rate environment. Now, as we've seen in the past, probably 12 months as inflation has been the highest it's been in 40 years and interest rates moved as quickly as they have. That's also had an effect on expanding cap rates. So markets that were say 4%, now it's at 5%. And this is critical, right? Now we have been in real estate investing for 20 plus years. In our underwriting, we've always been conservative, meaning when we bought a deal and it was a going in four, four and a quarter cap, we would expand, meaning we're anticipating when we sell the property in three years, that the cap rate when we're selling is probably five and a half. We're growing it by probably a quarter plus uh, percentage per year. That's served us very well because now we've just exited and sold multiple properties this year in 2023, even again, probably four or five properties last year in 2022. And we were able to do that successfully and make substantial money and returns for us and our investor because we knew these factors that affected cap rate. We planned for them methodically. Unfortunately, I'm telling you now, I've seen other people that are investors that are probably like I'd call a half cycle investor. They've only been around the block for three, four, five years. And so they didn't do that. And now as they are attempting to want to sell, the deal's too thin and they're not able to achieve the returns. And so it's unfortunate for them and their investors, but truthfully, it could have been avoided had they known and really followed diligently to this type of investment process. Using cap rate for decision making is critical, right? This is where, and again, as I shared uh, previously, firms can kind of try to fudge the numbers, right? They can, you know, think that the cap rate's not going to expand or, you know, they put it in as flat or declining. And that's not a smart thing. I, I know that my daughter, she's a part of our acquisitions team and our other team members. You know, we've explained and inculcated into our team and our culture the reality of you've got to be true to the numbers because numbers don't lie. And so the cap rate is important. It's not the whole piece when you're buying an asset, but it's an important piece to look at what is our going in cap rate? What are we buying it at in relationship to our loan rate? And then the other piece of it is also where are we at with the current income in relationship to that cap rate? And then also how are we able to expand that income maybe in the first 12 months. And so that is a critical element of being able to assess your risk, being able to assess your overall potential for return, and determining the type of investment potential. Again, some people get a little too hung up on cap rate where they make it their only thing. It's a holy grail. Now, it is a critical piece, but it is a piece of the puzzle. You have to factor these other areas in, as we've just discussed, so that you can assure yourself and your investors that you're making a holistic quality decision that's going to have a successful outcome. That's all I have for today. But before you go, I have a free gift for you in the description of this video. I'm here to keep you informed so that you can make the best decisions when it comes to investing your hard earned money. I'm giving you my free guide to investing in multifamily real estate, which gives you all the insights I've gathered over the past 20 years of investing. Click the link in the description and download it. I hope you're able to learn something today and I'll see you in the next video.